In today's video, we're going to be testing and comparing the top four best-selling polycrystalline solar panels because in last week's video, we compared the mono and the poly in name brand versus value brand, and I found that an $80 solar panel that's manufactured in India by Rich Solar produced more power than the name brand monocrystalline ones. It had practically the same efficiency, had nearly the same temperature coefficient um, drop when the panel was hot, when we had reflectors on it, and it performed very well. So I want to figure out which polycrystalline solar panel people should buy. And this video is not sponsored by any of these manufacturers. I bought all of these solar panels with my own money directly from Amazon. And what will make this test very interesting is I bought solar panels from all over the world. On the far right, we have Renogy and that's manufactured in Thailand. Next to that, we have Lightcatcher and that's manufactured in Germany. And then we have Rich Solar that's manufactured in India, which was in the previous videos. And then we have a Mighty Max solar panel that's manufactured in Indonesia. The German made light catcher claims that it produces more power than the 100 watt equivalent from Renogy and Grape Solar. So we're going to see if that's actually true because we have a Renogy and we have a light catcher panel. So if one produces more than the other, we will see it today. And if light catcher's claims are true when we test them, we will actually have a really good high quality panel from Germany at a pretty good price, but I'm not sure. So I also bought another value panel we have a Renogy panel so it will be very interesting to figure out what these results are and these solar panels are very similar they have the same rated output they have the same cell number count they have the same efficiency ratings the same open circuit voltage so I'm really curious to figure out if one will do better than the other or if they all produce the same amount of power that's always possible as well this is our solar panel power test station we have a lithium iron phosphate battery an MPPT in a watt meter and this camera will be filming the watt meter and we will test each and every solar panel individually to get the most accurate results possible and the sky is perfect today there's a little bit of humidity but it's great and consistent without any clouds so it should be a perfect test because a large determinant factor of solar panel output is temperature I'm gonna put all of these solar panels away and wait for the Sun to come out and then we're gonna test them so before we test the polycrystalline panels we're gonna test a Renogy monocrystalline panel for a reference and right now it's producing 7 77.8 watts and for one more test before we do the polycrystallines we're going to do a flux panel 100 watt it's producing 78 watts for the first test we're going to do the Renogy polycrystalline and right now it's 49 degrees Fahrenheit and right now the Renogy is producing 101.6 watts which is really good now we have the german made panel and it's 52 degrees fahrenheit and right now the light catcher is only producing 91 watts now it's 90 watts that's crazy let me just check the wires to make sure nothing's wrong that's not what i was expecting at all so i checked all the connections and everything looks really good we're only producing 88 to 92 watts in full sunshine and now we have the rich solar panel and it is at 49 degrees Fahrenheit. The rich solar panel is producing 100.5 watts. Now we have the Mighty Max connected from Indonesia and this one is 57 degrees. And this one's producing 99 watts, the Mighty Max, which is really good considering its price point. Now the Renogy panel is back on the test bed and it's 91 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna test the output again. And now that the Renogy is hot, it's only producing 93 watts. Now we have the German made polycrystalline and it's at 97 degrees Fahrenheit and the output is 84 watts, 85, 85 watts. God, this thing is not producing as much power as I was expecting. That's a bummer. And I'm German. I want this thing to do well, and it's not. Now we're testing the rich solar panel. It's at 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and the output is 93 watts. Seriously, for the price, this thing is awesome. Right now, the Mighty Max is at 92 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's producing 93 watts, so pretty good. I was not expecting the German panel to do so badly, so I set up the panels again for a third and final test to see if maybe my results are inconsistent. And right now, the, the temperature of these panels is 127, 130, 134. 131, 127, so they're really hot and we're gonna retest the output one final time. First, we have the Mighty Max solar panel and right now it's producing 87 watts. Now we're testing the light catcher and it's producing only 80 watts. Now we're testing the rich solar panel and it's doing 87 watts. 
and the Renogy is producing 90 watts, which is pretty great. Now we're going to do a quick comparison of materials and craftsmanship for these four polycrystalline solar panels. So we have Rich Solar on left, we have the Renogy, we have the Light Catcher, and then we have the Mighty Max solar panel. So we're going to start this comparison at the Mighty Max solar panel. And at the diode box, all of the solder joints look nice and shiny and super strong. So they did a great job with that. But if you look at the silicon, it's a mess. They just slapped it on there and it doesn't look like anybody spent much time putting it together. Also, look at the bead of silicon on the side here. It's just really messy but it will probably not affect performance, but it doesn't look that great. Also, the tolerances for the frame, you can tell that part of this frame is sticking up just a little bit compared to the other ones. Compare that to a German-made one that's flush and flat and perfect. This one is not as nice. But the quality of materials that they used is pretty good. So, I mean, it's all right, but yeah, they really slapped this thing together. So the Mighty Max solar panel is pretty cheaply manufactured. So let's compare it to the Light Catcher solar panel that's manufactured in Germany. These are crimped though, and they are not soldered. Actually, look at this. One of, one of the strands is out of the crimp. And there's another strand that's out of this crimp. So that's not good at all. Um, the silicon bead behind the box looks perfect. And the back plate of this solar panel is shiny and made out of a high quality like silicone. It feels really good, way higher quality than the back of this one or the Renogy. Like, I don't know what they're using, but it feels really nice. Also, look at this bead of silicon on the inside. It is perfect. They must have robots doing this because I don't see any inconsistencies and it's really high quality stuff. Also, the frame tolerance is beautiful. These are manufactured to a very high tolerance and they look great. So it's a bummer that they didn't crimp these last couple strands, but the rest of the panel is immaculate. I mean, these things are really nice solar panels. So that was the light catcher. Now we're gonna check out the Renogy solar panel. And this looks great, actually. All of the wires are crimped properly. All of the solder joints are great and the bead of silicon looks amazing. So this is well manufactured. Renogy did a great job here. Also the bead of silicon going down looks good all the way throughout the panel. And the frame tolerances look really nice too. So this is a really high quality panel and Renogy did a great job. I would say that it's slightly higher quality than this German made one. I don't know what they're using in the back though. The quality of materials with this German one seem better, but the craftsmanship seem better on this one. They did a great job here. So now let's compare the Renogy polycrystalline to the rich solar polycrystalline. And I love this panel. It's super cheap and it produces a lot of power but look at what they did inside these are not lined up properly this is not crimped they just soldered the whole thing which will not affect performance but look at how they made this i don't see any strands missing but i can't even look at the strands on this side so i do not like how they put this together um the bead in the back looks all right but on the inside they just slapped it in there also this bead doesn't look that great the panel also came dirty with dust from india this frame is actually the smallest of the frame but the tolerances look really nice but it's a very small frame compared to this one. So I don't like that. I like thicker frames in double walled aluminum. This one doesn't look as good as the others. Another thing I noticed while comparing these solar panels is that the Renogy and the German made one have a quality control pass sticker. The rich solar has none to be found and the mighty max solar have none to be found. It's important to have this on here because they need to check the diodes. I've actually had solar panels come to me twice with bad diodes. So it's good that they actually have a quality control sticker because they need to test these things before they send them out. So Renogy and the German made light catcher definitely excelled in that regard. I would say that the Renogy was number one. The German made light catcher was number two. Rich solar was number three and mighty max solar was number four so what should we think about these solar panels i was really bummed this time because i thought that that beautiful german made solar panel would produce tons of power and i i would be able to run to my followers and say look look this one's good and i wanted to buy a bunch of them but it's horrible the rated output is pathetic 
And some people could argue and say, oh, I got a bad panel. Maybe I got a bad batch. But their quality control should be able to catch it. So I'm kind of glad that I found a bad panel even if it is. Because typically with solar panels, you're going to have to buy a bunch of them. And you're not going to individually test them. So if anybody finds a bad panel from any of these manufacturers, that's a bad sign of their manufacturing process. So yeah, the German made light catcher. I'm never going to buy those panels ever again. It is a beautiful panel. I don't know what they're using. They're shiny, they're sleek, but I would never buy one ever again. They do not produce much power at all. So what do we think about the other solar panels? I think the Ranagy did such a great job. I mean, it is so well crafted. It looks great. The power output was great, but the cost is a bit high. So the Ranagy is $110 and you can buy almost the same output panel for $80 from Mighty Max or Rich Solar. Personally, $30 difference for that difference in craftsmanship that would not affect performance, I would actually go with the Rich Solar or the Mighty Max. I don't really care how they put the silicon on there. As long as it's a high quality panel materials wise and there is a good output, I don't mind at all. These are all under warranty. But the Renogy is beautiful and sometimes it's on sale. The Renogy polycrystalline panel I can recommend. That thing is really nice. But I must stress that I do not like any of Renogy's monocrystallines so far. The rated output is pathetic. Like they are horrible. But the Renogy polycrystalline, heck yeah, that thing is really nice. Another thing that I calculated was the percent decrease in power when the panel was really hot. So I compared the cold panel output and then the really hot panel output and I got a percentage but it was only off by like two or three percent so there was nothing for me to really remark on that so we could say that all of the panels had a very similar performance temperature coefficient wise but yeah man I am so bummed about that German panel <laughs> jeez I guess I'm still recommending the rich solar and the Renogy Oh my god, I was hoping I could find something that was better. By the way, I tried ordering the Grape Solar Polycrystalline panel, but they told me that they weren't going to ship it for the next two weeks. And I was like, come on, man. And the reviews were okay. So I guess that was one of the best-selling polycrystalline that I missed out on with this test. Maybe the Grape Solar panel is way better. I doubt it. I feel like we've hit the roof of this size of polycrystalline output-wise. Like, we have that consistent 100 watts. It's like 99 to 101. So these panels are really good. But what I do not like now is 100 watt monocrystalline panels. I can't believe how bad they do compared to these cheaper polycrystalline panels. So if that's one lesson you could get out of all of these videos is the polycrystalline panels are awesome and they come at a great price. So yeah guys, this was a long video but I hope you guys liked it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also check out my website and my book. I have a lot of information in there. Lots of free information on the website. I have a lot of other videos so please check them out if you're new here and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.